This is very exciting, everybody. Look at that. I believe that to be the Prince Consort himself. Do you agree with me? Could that be the Prince Consort? Tingana? Oh, there's a kudu alarm calling. Just listen to that because we often talk about it. We seldom are able to actually let you hear it though. You hear that? Whoa! And he's calling, he's calling! I'm just gonna call this in because I don't think it's been called in. Stations is a male leopard, adult male leopard, junction, Leadwood and Gari Main. Animal is mobile in a westerly direction. Hello, big fella. He's on. Hmm? That's spectacular. I haven't actually stopped to have a good look at him yet. Okay, let's turn around. Isn't that special? And he's alarm calling. Uh, no, he's not alarm calling. I mean, he's territorial calling. And as soon as those kudus started to bark at him, he stuck his tail in the air in that little flash of surrender. Wonderful. And you all obviously agree with me that this is Tingana. And if you are perhaps a new viewer, that vehicle in front of us is another safari vehicle, of course, and they are just, you know, there are lots of safari lodges around here, and they're enjoying the sighting like we are. And Tingana has maintained that limp. He's got a very slight limp on his right foot, it doesn't seem to affect him at all. Keep going down here. Hello Debbie, you're wondering why he would soar as he turned towards the kudu. Debbie, the only reason he would soar is to mark his territory. There's no other reason for him to do that. And he's not hunting, that's why he didn't worry too much about those kudu. Brilliant, you know what? I mean, so we could so easily have missed him. We came down this drainage line. Right, let's follow him. He's going north onto Juma. In Kom. And I'm afraid nobody else seems to be allowed to follow him because we're the only ones from Juma here. He's just marked his territory there. Now, many of you might consider that fairly strange behavior, but leopards will not, um, they will seldom hunt while they're marking territory. He's definitely in some state of, well, not agitation, but he's on a patrol. And that's why he's walking in the middle of the drainage line. I've watched leopards when they're hunting along a drainage line. They don't walk in the middle of it like this. They'll go either side because they want to maintain the cover. Let's see if he doesn't call again. Now he's walking straight to where those cubs were. So I wonder if he'd find them. I don't think he's a threat to them, to be honest. They have shared kills before. Let's just get next to him. He might also be looking for Karula, you know. I'm suspicious that she's coming back into Estrus. So let me just get in front of him there, Craig.
turned around. Can you see him? What's he doing? He's turned around. Okay. I'll turn around now. I'm just not going to move because I would quite like him to come back this way. He stopped right behind us. Go ahead, Orbs. I'm going to turn. Sorry, Orbs, I can't copy you. He's turned north up the Mwamati. There we go. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye for them. I haven't found them, though, I'm afraid. There we go. Perfect. Tanis, a good question from you about territorial marking and do all animals mark their territory? Tanners, they don't, you know. Many animals are not territorial at all. Uh, elephants, for example, don't mark territory. Buffalo don't mark territory. Um, impala do some of the time when they're going into the rutting season and they'll mark territory. But the cats, and with we're, we're this sort of noticeable exception of the cheetah, cheetah do mark, but they don't have very definite territories. But the rest of the cats are very territorial. Lions, leopards, extremely territorial. Hyenas, very territorial. Even the small cats, serval and caracal and African wildcat, they will be very territorial. <laughs>